Are they good on front line? All right, whenever you guys are ready. Hi, my name is Brad Martin, and I work with Jim McCalla, Michael Gabush, Noah Oland, and Danny Hoffman, and we are peer to peer. This is Susan. She's 32 years old and a stay at home mom, but her son is struggling academically. And like 12.3 other million American families, she can't afford tutoring because she lives in a low income area. Now, let's go to the other side of the spectrum. Here is Marla. Marla is 45 years old and lives in a middle class neighborhood. But her daughter's come into a different problem with tutoring. She can't seem to find the right thing. And then we have Justin. He's in four AP classes, has a super hectic schedule. How is he supposed to work a job every single day after school? Susan needs a tutor provided for her family. Marla needs a tutor her daughter feels comfortable with. And Justin needs a job that provides flexible scheduling. That's where we come in. Peer to Peer is a website that connects qualified high school tutors to parents of elementary and middle school students. And for every three sessions booked, we can donate an hour of our time to a low-income family in need. But what makes us different than everyone else is a comfortable learning environment. We provide a comfortable learning environment for our uh, customers. So instead of them being paired up with people that are 20, 30, or even 40 years older than they are, they're paired up with people that have similar interests and are in the same age range. And then for flexible, for uh, Justin, who's got plays two sports, has a bunch of um, hard classes, he gives us his hours and we make it work. And the most important part of our business is giving back to the community. For every three sessions booked, a family like Mar uh, Susan's gets a uh, free tutoring session provided for her. This would be our website and this would be the first thing you see. You go up into the top right corner and you'd make an account. After that, you'd see the different tutoring options and course subjects that we provide. So if I'm Marla and my daughter needs math tutoring, I go to there and our verified tutors would show up. I would see their name, age, interest, and a photo of them. And if I liked Brad, I'd proceed with him. So after a parent would click on a tutor, they would then be prompted here to book uh, one session for $25 an hour. After they book, they would see the tutor's entire schedule so they can find a date that works for the both of them and schedule from there. Then bring in all their information, they would receive an email just like this one, confirming the date, time, and location of the tutoring session. At this point, a tutor would also receive an identical email. The first group of people we target is parents like Marla. These would be our customers as they would pay for their child children to use the service. They would be 30 to 60 years old, uh, in the middle class with kids in grades K through 8. Another portion of our parents would be parents like Susan. These parents would be our users as they would not pay for our service, but have the same demographics, except they'd be in the lower economic class. Next, we have, our, we have our students. These would also be our users and would be kids in grades K through 8 struggling academically. And finally, we have our tutors. As our employees, these would be high school students in lots of AP and honors courses with high GPAs. Our pricing sp splits up is that for every hour of tutoring, a parent pays us $25 directly. We then pay the tutor $18 of that, of that total cost, and we keep $7 as our profit. We got, to these, we got to these prices based on our solution interview data. 96% of parents said they'd be satisfied paying $25 for a tutor for one hour. 93% of students said they'd be happy making $18 per hour, which is what, uh, almost double minimum wage. In the entire United States, reaching just over 21.5 million people, we multiplied this by the frequency of purchase, which is 20 times per year, and the average unit price to get $25, or which is $25 to get $10.8 billion. Then focusing on, on just the state of Illinois, we did the same number of customers and multiplied that by 4%. As 4% of the U.S. population lives in Illinois. Multiplying that by the same frequency and unit cost, gets us to $432 million. Finally, just as Station Middle School, out of roughly 972 parents in total, we can reach 777 of them. We then multiply this by 20 as a frequency and the same unit price of $25 to get $390,000 in revenue from Station alone. And since we take $7 for every tutoring session, we would make roughly $150,000. We do realize there is a big liability in our business model as tutors could potentially break away and stop using us as an, the intermediary to find tutors. How we, how we would prevent this is once we verify a tutor through our service, we would make them sign a contract to prevent them from doing such a thing. While we were researching our competitors, we found that our three main competitors, varsity tutors, Mathnasium, and Wizen, all have one big advantage over us, and that was the fact that they use college slash professional level tutors. However, we use high school level tutors in honors and AP level classes because we believe they offer a level of comfortability that these college and professional level tutors don't offer. Our service is much, also much more affordable than these other tutoring services out there, and we give back to the community. 
The only way that our customers will gain access to, through our serv to our service is through our website. Through our website, we'll be able to control our content, pricing, and schedule. Our minimum viable product will be testing our unique value proposition, revenue streams, and customer segments, parts of our business model. We'll be conducting a pilot program at Station Middle School to see whether our business has any flaws before launching towards the rest of the district. We'll also have a group meet with all the tutors in it so we can keep them up to date and post, constantly post information. We'll also have a Google Doc with the profile photo of a, tutor, of a tutor as well as a description about them, and this Google Doc will be shared with parents. This is what we will expect to our MVP base to look like. On the 5th, we sent out a mass email to 100 potential tutors with the Google form attached to it. And the 6th through 20, we'll be taking the results of that Google form to see if they meet our criteria, as well as scheduling for further interviews with them. We'll be having these interviews through the 20th through the 1st to further see if they're, if they're willing and meet our criteria further. And on the second, we'll be sending out a mass email to the parents of station uh, saying that we are launching our program. And the third to the first of May, we will be con connecting the tutors and the parents through the group me and the Google Doc. Um, this is what, what our cr actual criteria is for tutors. Like Danny said, first we want them to have a high GPA, so a 3.8 or above. Second, we want them to be in some AP or honors classes. And third, we want them to have a good mentality towards learning and to children. In our interview process, we will, want, we will have a one-on-one -on -one interview with a couple of us being there to further see if they want to become a tutor and will be dedicated towards it. And we'll also have the tutor bring in a letter of recommendation from the teacher that they want to tutor, the teacher, the subject they want to tutor in. Uh, we'll determine the success of our customer segments, UVPs, and revenue streams by the number of uh, tutors verified, the number of lessons, free lessons booked, and the number of lessons booked in all, respectively. And out of the 100 potential tutors we sent an email to, we are expecting 30 of them to fill out our Google. We have already got 30 uh, results from the Google form. We're expecting 25 of them to go through our interview process and 20 of them to be ver verified on our Google Doc. Out of the 972 parents that we're expecting to email, we, out of the 972 parents that we're, that we're going to be emailed, we expect 932 of them to open the email and 777 of them to use our service. We got this number from our solution interviews. Our first marketing strategy is Facebook. We directed with the parents like Marla at Station Middle School. It'll be used to keep them updated about a pilot program. Secondly, emails. As Drew touched, uh, as, uh, sorry, okay. uh, our secondly, emails. We'll be sending out an email to parents high school students that could potentially become tutors. We'll also be sending out an email to the to the parents of Station Middle School students to let them know when our pilot program will be ready. Our total operating cost is zero dollars due to having the Station Middle School parent directory. Since we already have the parent directory, we have all the emails that we need and therefore don't need any money. Again, we're peer to peer. And remember, we provide every student the opportunity to excel academically. Thank you. So we can just email them directly with a, a link to our Google Docs so that they can see the tutors and then get back to us on if they want to schedule a lesson. Okay. I mean, and I appreciate that you did all of these interviews and and you got a really high open rate of your emails, 84%. It's just in general in the business world, that's kind of unheard of. So you may want a little cushion, a little buffer in case you meet up with reality and 84% of station parents don't open their emails. So what could be a plan B for communicating? Um, so if their emails don't really work out, we could um, we could just send them other ways. Um, you can go to station middle school directly. We have um, had several meetings with the principal there, Dr. Paul. Okay. So um, she might be able to post something in the newsletter that would 
motor service that way. Awesome. So, and I think Station has got their own PTO as well. They do. You could probably ask for a few minutes to do a little promotional pitch for your services, and you might make it easy on Dr. Paul and send her photos of you. Are you guys going to be tutors too? Yeah. Yeah, we will be tutors. Yeah. So you make make it really easy for her to put in a digital visual as well as copy for you guys, unless you want her to make up your promotional. You wouldn't want to do that, would you? Okay. Yeah, I think you want to control yeah. it. Think you want to Any ideas on how many high schoolers tutor through other channels? Like, is that a common um, common job? Is it uncommon? Is it? I know that, especially here at the high school, most students get tutors with professional tutors. There's not a ton of opportunities, if any, for high schoolers to be tutors. So is there any <clears throat> preparation, or I'm just imagining how this will go, assuming you're here and you're able to acquire some customers, assuming you're able to get these kids, or get these tutors out to, um, out to the location, have you outlined at all what that hour is going to look like? Is there some type of, I don't think you, is there some type of preparation that you want to make sure that the parents are doing, because these are K through 8th graders, mm -hmm. right? You want to make sure that when you, when those, that, that tutor arrives, they hit the ground running, and they're not wasting the first 15, 20 minutes figuring out what do we need to talk about during this particular session. So that might be something to think about, at least, uh, capture those in them. Can you guys go back to your financials? Um, because you guys said you were giving one free hour of tutoring per hour spent, like, of actual paid tutoring, correct? No, I said for every three lessons booked, the tutor would be donating another session to a loan compare with you. So the, the tutor is going to donate, or you guys are going to pay a tutor to do it? No, but uh, we're thinking that for every three lessons, because we are paying double minimum wage and looking over uh, four sessions, $18 over four sessions would be about like 836 like trying to do the math, like 54 over uh -huh. four lessons, and uh, we think that's going to be adequate to incentivize them to do the, th uh, the fourth one for free. And we're exploring options on making the fourth one a service hour with Barrington High School, or seeing if we can uh, do something like that with the high school. So the tutor is paying for the, for the fourth session yeah. hour? They're making an effective rate of like 13 or 14 bucks yeah. an hour for their four hours. Mm -hmm. Which is still more than normal wage, but... You're going to have to eventually include uh, taxes in there. Yeah, I'd be scared, though, because what if your tutor doesn't, first off, want to do, they want to get paid for everything mm -hmm. that they do. Mm -hmm. And also, if you're telling everyone, one, you, you're donating an hour for every three spent, what if, what if parents are, don't, don't want they could potentially see that their money is being used to help other people and not their kids. Why can't they just buy four hours of tutoring for $75 instead of they get three hours of tutoring and they're essentially donating the third? Or the, because someone is paying for that hour. It's your customer. How do you know that your customer is going to be fine donating that hour? Wouldn't they want all of their money for themselves? Well, they would, but our price point is much more affordable than the other competitors in the area, so um, I think the other lowest one is closer to $40, so that's, well, um, our price point is well below that. I do think you want to think about, though, if the tutor would be willing to donate that one hour of service out of their own Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the Google form that we sent, so we got 30 responses, okay. and yes, there were a couple that said they weren't willing to do one session of tutoring for free, but uh, about 25 of the responses that we got said they would be willing to tutor another session for free. Okay, you might want to check also with, I don't know who's running the service hours program, make sure that they'll be willing to accept it as a service hour. Okay, because you don't want people to promise that to people and then the good folks over in the guidance department say, sorry, we can't do that because you guys are not a 501c3. The, uh, the, the parents who can afford to pay the $25 per hour for, for tutoring, 
pay for all four sessions, right? You pay $25, they, they pay, pay $100. Well, they, just, uh, they pay for the sessions they book. So the, the fourth session is really a, the, the, it's not like the tutor, uh, they pay $100, and then that fourth one we, we take away from them. They just they pay 75 for their three, and then we work out independently with the tutor on how they're going to donate their time. Yeah, I'm just going to, I, I, I kind of agree where you're going. So somebody, some, somebody's, this, the unfortunate parent that doesn't have any money, they're, they're never paying anything for a tutor, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it would seem to me that, that just from a practical point of view, you might want to just pay the tutor eighteen dollars an hour for all four sessions, and or pay them fifteen dollars an hour, and, and you you guys cover the three sessions yeah. for. Yeah, okay. that's a little clear. Yeah. I think so. Where will this tutoring occur? The Barrington uh, Library. Barrington Library, because it's it's good at walking distance. Is, is there an, is there a space in the library? Yes, that's there's a lot of space. Just to quiet, you know. Yeah, yeah. there's several there. places that take a session. It's also very public, so um, and no car, no cost to you. <coughs> no, that would be completely free to use. Okay, so that would be up front in the, the uh, promotion to parents. Yes. The location is, the meeting location is the Barrington area yes. library. When, when you did your, uh, you know, addressable market, uh, did you do some analysis as to how, 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 how often tutors are used for, by middle school kids and grade school kids? Um, we did do some analysis of other um, companies and how frequently they're using um, how frequently they like booking sessions, um, but we um, just around finals time, especially, gets very busy, and there were 52 weeks in the entire year. Um, 20 seemed very appropriate for one parent to be. So around that point, when you said finals time, so when's from a timing perspective, I mean finals are happening now. Uh, next I didn't miss. I didn't uh, miss a peak there, as we'd only be doing K through eight, and middle schools are not at finals. Okay. So, do you have a sense of peak testing periods or anything like that, or? Um, well, middle schoolers don't have finals. They do have very busy weeks at the end of the year, just like with us. So we are anticipating that's the most busy that we get. Okay, you, you want to back that up because at the, are you talking about the end of the year is when it gets busy? Um, um, yeah, the end of the year and in December, right, um, right, right where we're about now, where. Um, to be really like to have a test of, you know. you, you, um, I, I guess the reason I'm pushing this a little bit because you're going to miss it. Um, next week is the final week of school, right? So it's kind of almost too late for tutoring. You may get a couple here or there, but not a lot. And the end of the year, you guys should be already wrapped up with your investor pitch. So what's going to happen between now and mid-March? that you're going to acquire experience with. Uh, actually, going off of your point, um, unlike high school, middle school isn't separating semesters, it's actually quarters. Okay. So basically, um, the, the second half of the year is going to separate into two quarters. Okay. So the end of third quarter, basically, it's right around the time of spring break. Mm -hmm. And from my prior experience, a lot of middle school teachers like to put tests on the day okay. before spring break. So about when do you guys want to be tutoring students so that they're ready for those exams ready for spring break? Uh, I uh, we're not exactly sure. We'll be testing that for the pilot program station to uh, know exactly how. I think you want to be getting the word out amongst those parents like January. Um, and you don't want to be jamming this come March 2nd. Well, isn't it an ongoing process? I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't cram for a test, right? You, you, you're going to be tutoring throughout the semester, throughout yeah. the quarter. Yeah. So you're not waiting for the last minute. You're, you're presumably these kids will be ongoing you know, mm -hmm. all semester long. Yeah. And I have a feeling that you probably could benefit from a little bit of old-fashioned paper flyers, because from what I remember, middle school pickups, there are whole lines of parents that are there to pick up their kids. And you may want to circulate some flyers for a couple times a week um, to start spreading the word out in addition to your digital stuff. Yeah, you could just walk a line of cars parked there and be like, Free doing, uh, doing service, doing right, service. Right, right, and you may it's want, easy. I mean, you'll for sure need to clear that with the building principal, but then there's another date you may want to look for, and that's um, the parent-teacher conferences, 
because I can guarantee the day after some parents are going to be looking for tutoring services. And how do you ascertain who's eligible for free tutoring? Um, we're going to be setting up a program where they uh, they apply for it, and we're really we're going to try to get down that process during our pilot program station. I would imagine most of the schools would have information as to you know who's eligible for yeah. some you know some accommodations. I mean, otherwise you're going to be asking for financial statements for parents. Which mm -hmm. I'm Last uh, statement here, comment. Yeah, I, and I think if you frame it to the prospective tutors as this is a way to get paid, you know, fourteen dollars effectively an hour, and in exchange you'll also knock off a volunteer hour, you know, during this process. I mean, that may be beneficial to some prospective tutors. All right, are we good luck, guys. We're at zero, right? Zero. Okay. So thank you guys. Good job.